kiss cuts in this logo right here, which are a series of cuts in the logos to make it difficult to peel off in one piece. And the third thing is there's this latent image in here where if you hold the box on the edge and with a li overhead light and you tip it, at the right angle you'll see a little OK image in there. And so th those are things that you can see if you believe you've counterfeit product. This phone number, 1-800-RU-LEGIT, is our piracy hotline. <laughs> All right, so if anybody has any concerns, questions about piracy, you think you're being approached by somebody that's selling you pirated software, either counterfeit software or uh, illegal by some other means, you can report it through 1-800-RU-LEGIT. All right, so let's talk about the time. Like I said, it's going to come hard, it's going to come fast, it's going to come late. Uh, we are, uh, uh, we're going to have to move quickly. Here we are. 316 marketing day, initial planning. I would urge you to go uh, pick up your cellular phone, make a call before you leave and say, we need to get together tomorrow. Next week, it's time to start to develop that Windows 98 uh, and attach forecast. What do you think you could do? Who are the vendors you want to partner with beyond Microsoft? The week of the 30th, it's time to start finalizing those marketing plans and that forecast. As Jeff said, we're going to do a one-time build of pallets. Microsoft is building the pallets ourselves and shipping them through our distributors to our retailers so that they'll ship as a complete unit. And that gives us very little time to um, make changes. It will be based on what is ordered by 415. There may be additional pallets available after 415. We can't guarantee that. But we will build to the orders that have been placed by 415 uh, to our distribution partners. And in addition to the pallets, the Plays Better Bundle is a one-time build. And so anybody who chooses to purchase that either as open stock or in pallet form, the deadline for getting those in place is 4.15 as well. And so the week of 4.6, it's time to work up those orders. 4.15 is get those orders placed. Then you've got a little breathing room to get your operations figured out for the coming soon. That begins 5.28. And then the street date for Windows 98, 6.25. Our people are, uh, are familiar with our, our program. They're ready to start talking to you about how we can maximize this, uh, this launch and help you uh, make this a success. I do want to mention for the Canadian retailers, at 1 o'clock in the Oxford room, Microsoft Canada is holding a briefing for our Canadian retailers. So that's something that I just want to mention. And at this point, We'll, uh, Steve will come up, Jeff will come up, we'll take questions uh, that anyone in the audience may have. Is there any form of technology guarantee on Windows 95? There's always a guarantee on Windows 95. Um, there's not a technology guarantee on Windows 95. We have a Winer's policy, I guess. If consumers call us and complain, we'll accommodate them, but there is not a you know, free upgrade to Windows 98 if you purchase Windows 95 in a, in a time frame. Yes? Pretty specific question. Is this product going to have a map price? Uh, the question was, will this product have a map price? Uh, we refer to that as a marketing fund reimbursement program. The answer is yes, we will put Windows 98 only, upgrade SKU only, under our marketing fund reimbursement program. The MFR price will be 89.80. 89.90, pardon me, 89.90. <laughs> We've left that last digit because certainly... It's part, of the market, it's part of the marketing fund program. Obviously, you can sell product at any price you want, you know, but uh, it's a marketing fund program. In the climate, we have to be very clear on this. Yeah, the back of the room, center. Um, did you say that the $20 offer expires March 31st? It does. Okay. With the exception of two products that will have an ongoing consumer offer, the Precision Pro Joystick and Greetings Workshop, those are unrelated to the Windows launch time frame. Their consumer offer will extend further, but for the balance of those, yes. Okay. Steve mentioned the importance of the back uh, scroll carry, which I agree with. Is there any opportunity to extend that at least a couple weeks, if not 30 days, to better accommodate that? I'm not sure, Steve, if what our overall plan is is to react differently to back to school or to, to feature We've got to work product. through that. I mean, there may be another set of products. We're working through our back to school program now. So it may be easy, as you say, just to extend it. We've got to work that through, understand the P&L responsibility, what that all means. So I, I hear you. 
maybe that could be the easy step. Okay. I would I would like to have actually a, a new offer to just to have a refresh, but uh, that offer is hot and it's still got some momentum. Maybe that's an easy way to do that. Yeah. I'm really concerned that this is the first thing we've heard that you're basically saying is that you're not going to give anybody a, a, a free upgrade on Win95 before the launch. So what kind of sales are we going to plan on doing in May and June once the word gets out? Win98 is coming. What do we tell the store or some of the customers to keep selling Win98 for that time period? We just say, oh, you can go complain with Microsoft. It's an unofficial law or what? I mean, or, why are you doing or do you know it's Steve pulling in there? Christian no, technology. Actually, there is a grace period okay. for four weeks before the launch. So it's thirty-day technology guarantee. <coughs> oh, okay. So if you buy within the first thirty days, or but then, now that's the coming soon period. So right. it's six twenty-five thirty days prior. So we misspoke. So there's a thirty-day technology guarantee. It's right. not called technology guarantee because that's a program that the office division is doing. Marketing very heavily and proactively before the product comes out. We are not marketing this grace period, but any customer who buys the product four weeks before, let's say who buys Windows 95, four weeks before Windows 98 comes out, will get the Windows 98 product for free. So we take care of this customer issue. How about that for responsibility? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the question up front was regarding if that was only on software or on loaded systems. Every OEM has their own upgrade policy for systems that may have Windows 95 and consumers that buy them before or after the Windows 98 launch. Uh, we tried to get a comprehensive list. You really have to get that from each OEM individual. Let me very briefly summarize the OEM piece. There is an OEM section, so you should talk to your, your OEM reps and so forth. But basically, um, we've tried to do as much learning from the Win95. We um, will have one coupon if you remember last time, each OEM had their own coupon. So there was a, there was a challenge in terms of looking at all the different coupons. So we'll have one coupon. There'll be one place you send the coupon to, which is just different. There's multiple places. The price of the rebate or the deduction is based on the OEM. So each OEM is going to determine <coughs> whatever price they want. So we've simplified two of the three. And we think in talking to most of our partners, that's an improvement over last time. But you need to talk specifically with your OEMs. Other That's questions? It's not getting too technical. Exactly how is PID 3.0 going to work? I mean, you're talking about a CD where you can't delete something like you used to be able to do on uh, uh, disks. Is a case where when you log onto the internet, Microsoft's going to look at the consumer's machine? Is Christian I'm, here? Uh, Christian. He's here, but we could hear the The question is about. PID 3.0, I'm sorry, I can't tell you exactly, without getting too technical, PID how, how is how PID, PID 3.0 specifically this um, ability to uh, do compliance checking and uh, prevent multiple copies on uh, of, off of a single set of media? Well, I was out of the room, so I don't know exactly what the question is. Is it about how the PID works technically? Yeah, uh, just if you could give kind of an overall statement about that. Um, I'm not up to speed. I would have to get back to you. Okay, we need to take that action. Yeah. yeah. So we need to get a, a, a communication exactly how that works. Yeah, I'll talk about piracy group because that's totally new. How they do that? What are your concerns? Well, right now because 98 is literally on CD. There's no way, like on the old, uh, the old three and a half inch disc based media, to go out and change a certain program. The only way that I could see that or that PID 3.0 would work right now is, is when the consumer logs onto the internet, Microsoft's going to start checking information on their system. In other words, having a running database and matching up, you know, if we've had more than one computer no, system that's logged on. I believe, I believe the technology is a little more simple. Self, it's self-contained on the CD. Yeah. I think what happens so, is it actually goes on and sees if there's, because just the version upgrade, sees what, do you have a pre-Windows version? If you do, it will go ahead and install it. There's two parts. Let me let me clarify. There's two parts. One is compliance checking, and it will look for a prior version of Windows on it. The second is to allow only one installation to one system. And my belief, and I don't have accurate info on it, is it's going to look at that system during installation, and then it will identify that that system by the hardware. If I go put it on another system, well, 
I'm not sure exactly how that works, but there's some work. It's not going to be, but, but uh, let me clarify. It's self-contained. It's not associated with, you know, what your premise was, is that Microsoft's going to develop a database on the internet. I can assure you that that's not how it's going to happen. Okay. We will get the answer to it. That would be the mother of all databases. So Christian, that. Yes, sir. But we, I'm just trying to make sure I understand this. Will software publishers start announcing that their product is designed for Win98, or if we won't have to get into the native and the compliance and all that of Win95 that we're experiencing today? There, there is a Windows 98. The question was, will software publishers start announcing, you know, they were designed for Windows 98, 98 or whatever. There is a Windows 98 logo program. Products, hardware or software, We'll go through the Windows Hardware and Software Quality Laboratory for testing to validate that they actually work with Windows 98 and then get authorization to use the logo. And so then those vendors will use the logo on their products. What so will it say? It will be a, uh, I don't know if we got an example here of the logo. I think it's designed this logo. Windows 98. This logo right here. It's this logo right here. Isn't that right, Kristen? Dave, hey, Dave, Dave Bullen, the question, Dave Bullen, the, the question is uh, relative to the logo program. What's the actual messaging on the logo? Is it designed for, or works better, or plays better? On the logo, it will say designed for Windows 98. Designed for Windows 98. And, and will you dictate to the publishers where exactly they put that that logo on each of the boxes that will be standardized? Yes, there's a whole set of uh, publishing guidelines that go with the logo. And if I'm a publisher and I'm still having problems getting authorization from Microsoft to get that logo, will we get into what we've experienced with Win95, that they'll start calling it something Win98 designed for or, or native, or will we get into that, that other software publishers? Is, I guess the question is, everybody has the Windows logo, and there's never been a problem with the Windows logo, but are we going to get into the testing parameters from Microsoft that software publishers will get sidetracked? Like well, I don't think there's going to be the sidetrack. We've, we have had the problem. In, yeah, we have had the problem in the past where um, I wouldn't call it like rogue publishers, but they've sort of hand built their own sort of pseudo design for logos. I kind of hate to see that, but there are enough benefits with the launch partner program for um, for ISPs or HPs who work with us to get their products loaded properly. That we figure that the your your tier the tier one vendors for both software and hardware are all going to be playing by the rules and have We'll get the details on the logo. Windows 98 logo Sure. Make that available. We will actually make that available. We'll make that available up on the expert website. Talk about the testing methodology. We need to get those testing people in. So obviously to engage engage and mobilize these industries, there's you know thousands and thousands of software publishers out there. So. Um, I hear the issue, we're trying to do our best, but we need to list the Windows 98 logo. And there will be a site on the net of supported you know, hardware, so with the internet there's an easily accessible resource to look at. Questions, yeah. The $20 rebate, is that enclosed within the box? Is it a tear off? The $20 the rebate? Question, the question was about the $20 rebate and how that's executed. So yeah. Uh, the $20 rebate in some cases will be applied uh, in manufacturing and others will be applied in the field. There will be, uh, there will not be any inbox rebates um, and uh, it will be like a rebate pad with mail-in fulfillment. All the pallets will have the rebate pads mounted on them and then we'll do supplemental merchandising uh, to get the pa uh, pads out to retailers that don't bring in the, the pallets. Yeah. Uh, the question is, is do we have one pallet or an optional pallet? We actually have uh, uh, what we're calling the core pallet, the Windows and Plus, the hardware pallet, which features the four hardware products that I mentioned, the games pallet, um, and uh, the Plays Better bundle pallet. So there's four. It's one pallet. No. Oh, yes, there are other displays. Remember the semi-permanent display, the one that you saw uh, and that you'll see in the back of the room is uh, ships empty. Uh, you can merchandise it uh, the way you would like to based on 
what you feel is the best attach opportunity for you and your customers, um, as well as the floor stand. So there is flexibility there. There is not a build to order custom pallet, but that's what the question is. If, if you're looking to make a custom pallet, because Microsoft is building these pallets, it's one configuration with a set amount of product. If you're looking to have a pallet display with, a, with alternative mix of product, uh, we'd suggest to talk to your distribution partner and, and determine if they can help you with that. We have made the other merchandising form factors available as well. So we're trying to give you flexibility in a variety of different form factors, but the pallets themselves are fixed because we are manufacturing those at Microsoft. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, on the pallets, um, what are you guys, what's, what's going to happen if there's damage between either Microsoft and distribution? Or between distribution and the uh, retail. We will have some. We will have some uh, surplus componentry built. Uh, we're we're working very hard to do the stability and road testing. Uh, we subject all of our merchandising and our in, and uh, placing a particular emphasis on it in this uh, campaign time frame to do the stability testing around the pallets and do the damage percentage. What we do is we get a failure percentage from those testings and we produce componentry parts for each of our distributors uh, and manufacturers for replacement of those. Does that include putting the pallet on a truck and driving it around? It's, that yeah, that's all, that's it, all being it, done by our operations. Al, I don't know if you can talk about the specific testing. I believe these folks are from distribution. We may want to you know, get into specific detail about that testing that we're doing, but I know that the testing, I can tell you, is very thorough. It includes you know, from dock A onto truck, onto dock B, <coughs> off of truck, back onto truck C, that goes then to, you know, fictitiously retail place with uh, bumping and loading uh, in quantities that are reflective of actual shipping. So we're working with the best stability tester in the industry, uh, at least we feel that way, and uh, we're, we're looking at those results right now. So we're still working on them. We share that concern. We want them to arrive as good merchandising uh, form factor. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, what are the recommended requirements for a machine to run Windows 98? I mean, I know you said Pen Team 16, uh, but Windows 95 would right? like work on a free <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm hoping for some hard questions. We're saying Pen Team 16. We believe that by the time of launch, there won't be you won't be able to buy a machine that has less than 32 megs. I think you would concur with that. But are you Memory so that cheap. That we're saying Pentium 16. That may be a nice minimum, but what's recommended? Actually, there is no, no, there is no, there is no official box. recommendation. The reason we cannot do that is it depends on usage. As an extreme example, if you have a Photoshop, you want 64 megs of a print. Period. Period. Yeah. We have you a use, if you use a word processor, 16 meg is good enough. I mean, we, it we would suggest on that's an opportunity for you. If you think there's more to sell more, I mean, we believe, just from a directional standpoint, the world of 64 megs is going to be here very soon. So, you want to get them now? Or, I mean, those are all just opportunities to sell. So, our recommendation is Pentium 16. You want to sell them 32 more megs, more, 16, 64, sell, sell, sell. We're saying, hey, here's an opportunity. People are going to ask those questions. Let's be good merchants. Let's be good salespeople. Let's sell them some more memory, if that's an important attach. Uh, that's how we would like to look at it. Yeah, uh, on the partners list, you don't have, well, there are a few software functions there. Uh, are we going to get more software functions of partners, and then can we get those lists? Well, we'll provide updates to our partner. The question was about <coughs> who was on our list and who's not on our list with regard to our partners. We'll provide more, uh, more complete lists and, and update you as we get more information. As I said, part of the purpose of Marketing Day not only was to mobilize our channel, but also to mobilize the industry. And so you saw a lot of participation from partners, some of which uh, are uh, being you know, pursued by Microsoft to participate in the program. And so the, least, the list is not complete by any stretch of let's, let's be clear. I mean, there just isn't as much opportunity on the software side as there are on the <laughs> multimedia, USB, web. And, I mean, those, we have other things to sell. So basically, the feature that gets surfaced is direct ads. <laughs> So if DirectX 5, so if there's games out there that can automatically load DirectX 5, that they will get a better experience. So, but a lot of the gaming experience is going to be on peripherals, game pads, full force feedback, those type of things. So, yeah, we're going to try to get as many partners as possible. But the opportunity to get software partners is not as great as to get some of these other partners, and that's what we're focusing on. Yeah, question over here. 
I'll have to ask the gaming guys back here. Who do we have from IMG? John I Rodley. believe the way it works. John, John the, question, the, question is, the question is this. Windows 98 and DirectX capable games, how does that work? And then DirectX 5, DirectX 5, DirectX 5 capable games, how do they work on Win95? Give us the benefit. What, what's the experience? What's the benefit? I can't, I can't answer the question. A game that supports DirectX 5 APIs will write directly to the hardware via the new APIs. So therefore, it will perform action scenes faster, and the graphics will be at the same time more realistic and engaging than <coughs> games that do not have access to the hardware using those APIs. So the gaming experience is a better one because you get better performance on a similar machine and more engaging, more realistic graphics. What will it do if a person has not upgraded yet to 98? They're still playing it on Win95. You can still play it, but you will not got, get the same performance. The same on, the same, on the same hardware, you will not get the same performance. Now, if you, on, in addition to that, add a 3D hardware accelerator card. Windows 98 will even take advantage of that. On top of it, it will even be performing faster than Win95 on the same computer with the same card. Other questions? Yes. I think that you overstated the amount of USB capable machines that are going to be in the marketplace. Yeah. And my fear is that you're going to generate a lot of interest in USB peripherals to people who don't have ports. Okay, so let me repeat the question. And I, actually, this is a good question to get to the harder questions. We've thrown out some variables, some factors, some side market sizing, a lot of things. One of them was the USB install base or capable machines at launch. And I believe the number that we said at 625 is about 40 million. Was that the number? <coughs> 41 million. That's going to be total. It can't be retail. That is probably that is, total. That's in the business that is, space that is, as well that is, as the that is total. space. That is, that is total. Well, and the data came from, where's Kerry? Because I asked him when that number was up. From IDC. So we th we think it's a defendable number. The the number that we probably should help drill you da drill down on you is, if that's the total market, how much is that of the consumer market? So one of the issues is last year we sold 33 million PCs, I think was the number and 10 million went into the home, so if you take 30% of that, let's say there's 12 million. I mean, I'm just trying to give you, 41 is the big market. I would suggest, in terms of the home targeted, is probably more like a 12, 13, 14 million dollar install base. What? Well, I mean, we'll work on IDC. We'll work the numbers. But IDC says it's 41 million. I just try to do a very simple, but you may know that better than we do. Um, but we should give you a number that you know, if you say 8 to 10, I said 10, we should at least talk and say, what do we really think it is? What's the thing? 30 million households that have machines that won't be able to take advantage of one of the major benefits of your marketing too. And I'm just worried that you're going to generate a lot of sales of peripheral products, particularly, that won't work. Won't work because the U.S. There there are, no USB, no USB machine. I hear the concern. We'll, we'll have to make sure that we're very clear on that yeah. messaging. And your partners. And what? And your hardware part. Yes. Oh, there's your attached for a USB add-on card. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Also, keep I mean, in that, 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 I'm hoping that's the way we're starting to think. That, I mean, but that is a I genuine think. concern. And, and as this gentleman said, there's an attached opportunity for USB <coughs> device interface cards associated with that. And also, keep in mind one thing too: who are who our target consumer is in the 90-day timeline, right? We're going for the early adapters in the near term. Now, Steve mentioned that this uh, opportunity may span over six months, maybe a year, I don't know. But let's keep in mind the fact that these are people who embrace technologies, and we know a couple of things about them. Their desktops are not necessarily reflective of John Q. Public, right? They've got more enhanced uh, features and benefits. They've probably been uh, buying hardware uh, more recently and upgrading. So they, they, we know that this consumer target will benefit more from the latest technologies. Yeah, something, something we, should, we should add to that, that with the exception of the Intellimax USB, 
uh, Microsoft hardware is working to make combi products. So when the customer gets the product home on the USB peripheral, <coughs> they can use the USB port or they can use the game port or PS2 or whatever's appropriate for their machine. So our goal is to have a combi product for customers. A combi so USB or whatever. Yes. Others. Somebody, somebody mentioned that three uh, game front better on Windows 98. How does that work? Does, it, does that mean three get that same front better as well? Or that? Um, I don't think like a yeah, 3FX is a competing gaming platform. So a 3FX game will not take advantage of Windows 98. Yeah, I don't disagree that uh, by your numbers it might be a bigger launch than Win 95, but. Um, my understanding is that Microsoft's not going to do as much in mass advertising, television, things like that. Why not? Um, it's pretty simple. We try to match our marketing to the revenue opportunity in the most efficient, effective way. I mean, how much more do we have to do? I mean, we have to make the business trade-offs of saying, hey, if this is Win95, how can we get to Win95 and how much do we have to spend if it's bigger than Win95? We're just trying to make some adjustments and some business trade-offs. I mean, if the, if the math was every time we just have to spend like Win95 to do Win95, then I'm not sure what value add we bring to the party. Our business opportunity is to say, how do we maximize the revenue opportunity for the lowest cost and the most efficient marketing? One of the things that you saw with our marketing plan now is because of the number of users on the internet, we think we can get and market to those people more efficiently than we could with Win95 three years ago because the internet has allowed that. We're doing a lot of our pre-sale demand generation directly to those super users and early adopters via the internet. Those 22 million people that are already connected there. We're trying to drive, drive, drive to that to get them into your store. And that's our target market. So if the question is why don't we just spend like drunken fools to match Win95, we're not interested in that. We're trying to make sure we spend appropriately to maximize the revenue opportunity. And that's why we're trying to make those business decisions. I guess the messaging, some of the messaging we heard yesterday and also months back is that uh, you're not going to spend that level because it wouldn't be appropriate to do so. So, you know, I'm, I'm reading that as because you don't do it as big a launch, but... I, I wouldn't say that. I would, I would say hopefully we can mobilize the industry, get enough product mix out there, send the right message, get our ISV IG partners, work with our resellers to, to bring the consumer messaging. And if we can do that for 10 million, 5 million, whatever it's going to take, the less we can spend to maximize that opportunity, we're interested in it. That's what our shareholders are trying to make sure we drive towards. So that, that's what we're trying to do. Now, if there's an issue we don't think you're marketing enough to seize that opportunity, we should have that discussion. We don't want to undermarket. We want to market appropriately. So that's a different conversation than why aren't you spending as much on, as on Win95? We just don't think we have to. There's a bigger learning curve, bigger migration, 16-bit, 32-bit, GUI interface. I mean, it was just a different game. So the good merchants here are going to have to figure out how do you make the transition play for you, okay, versus Win95, there's all this hoopla. So that's what we want to work with you to say, well, how do we sell, how do we communicate, how do we target with the right marketing, the right messaging to make that happen. We believe our proposition Huge opportunity. In some ways, Windows 98 is smaller, but the opportunity is bigger. I like that. I, I like that formula. We can sell more by doing less. I think that's a good business proposition. And those are still pretty aggressive reach and frequency numbers. If you're going to reach everybody in your target audience eight times in print, um, that's still healthy. Yes. Yeah. It, it sounds to me like you're substituting some of the money from Windows 95 that was spent uh, on retail advertising, on internet advertising, in conjunction that, are you then going to sell directly to those people that you've marketed to? So instead of we, having them we have no, We have no intention in any of our strategies or plans. We have are completely committed to our partner model. So I, uh, I would not be able to buy a Windows 98 from Microsoft in any way. On that's not true. You can buy it at ERP, as you can today. You can call an 800 number today and buy any of our products at estimated retail price, which is typically 20 to 30 percent. It's less than 1 percent of our sales today, and that policy won't change with the Internet, actually. Actually, we have a, another project that we haven't formally announced yet, which is our Microsoft Store Online, where we actually want to take those orders and pass them on to resellers. So it's actually delivering orders to our resellers. That's a different subject. We'll, we'll talk about that when we're ready to to announce that. Steve, so, I actually want to clarify. It's an ERP plus shipping and handling. Right. So it's, it's at least 20 to 30% above what you would see uh, normal everyday street price. 